Perfect. All right, we are live. A little adjusting in here. Um, make sure we're all squared away. Um, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. It's good, good morning. To, it's good to have everybody here. I want to um, have a quick introduction of our special guest this morning. Um, we're going to try to uh, bring on some some guests who know some or little about the issues we're talking about so that they can ask real life questions. And our guest this morning, our um, morning show name for you, as you heard yesterday, is Doc Rock. But this Doc is Rock, yeah. Pastor Rocky Branch yes. from First Baptist Church. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself, Rock. Tell people who you are. Well, I, Rocky Branch, grew up here. I've uh, been gone for 26 years, pastor of the First Baptist Church. We also, uh, my wife and I, when we came back, we started Hope for Mitchell County, which is a project for kids and youth. And uh, we're trying to uh, continue to do things in the county, helping, helping uh, kids, homes, that sort of thing. Yeah. We have uh, a few different uh, things that we do annually. The bikes, the BMX bikes come, the, the Easter egg thing. We have a martial arts academy. That's a dollar a class for anybody. I have adults oh, and kids. Awesome. Yeah. That's cool. So it's, uh, you know, we're just trying to make it work. That's great. Yeah. That's great. I see um, Hope for Mitchell County around. I hear people talking about it. Yeah. It's just good to see that yeah. activity trying to make a make a change in our little. Yeah, I think we can do that, you know, because when I grew up, you know, and you guys, you know, were not around at that time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Spruce Pine had quite a few things, yeah. you know, and we've kind of fallen off of that a little bit. Yeah. So we're trying to regroup and bring some of that back. That's so. great. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for what you're doing. Oh, well, thank Absolutely. you. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me too. Yeah. Yeah. For being here. Yes. Yeah. So we are going to uh, dig into some questions very shortly. Um, but first off, I just want to, again, mention why we do these videos. Some of you may be watching this for the first time and wonder what the heck are these guys doing on Facebook and why are they here? That that question is something that just kind of formed um ron knows i know everybody that works at burleson plumbing knows we answer all sorts of questions on a daily basis uh we do plumbing heating electrical uh service here but we also sell all those products over the counter so there's all the time customers coming in with a faucet that's torn apart um, yeah. a pipe that's busted um, something with their heating system they don't know how to fix and we kind of walk people through that from our perspective at the counter um, in those departments and hopefully let them figure out how they might be able to do something on their own or where we can help them. Um, so the idea is you get you get a owner's manual for your phone or your car. Those are big purchases in your life. But the biggest purchase of your life is your home. Right. And in your home, you, you have no, no owner's manual. You don't know... Uh, without an expert or somebody at least has done it before you. That'd be um, a big manual. <laughs> yeah, it would be a very thick manual. So that's what we're doing. We're just talking through different points, common points. Um, if you want to get involved in that, if you want to ask the questions and get your question answered, you can do that. Uh, go to BurlesonPlumbing.com slash QA for question answer and submit that question. We actually draw um, some prizes off of those questions. We had Sheila Williams win a faucet uh, yesterday, um, brand new kitchen faucet, no strings attached. It's hers to take home with her. Um, and next month we are giving away this Wi-Fi thermostat. Super nice. So, um, yeah. go ask those questions. We'll, um, um, draw that sometime next month. There's no set date. We're, we, uh, wing things for the most part, but we will give that out next month. So go and ask your questions. Um, and on that, we will switch to our next segment, which today, um, the segment, that's neat. Well, hey, that's neat. Hey, that's <laughs> neat, is uh, we're gonna talk about this product right here that we have had a lot of people asking for this week um, and last week with these freezing temperatures. If you don't know what a heat lamp is, heat lamp is basically the description pretty much tells you everything you need to know. It really sums it up. It is a lamp that heats, but uh, what you do with this is um, put this near an area that's freezing. A lot of people put them in a wellhead. Um, you might put them in a basement, a crawl space where pipes continually start freezing up on you. Um, and this just puts out enough heat to get those thawed out or to stay unfrozen. Um, 
Ryan's got the second half of what we were going to talk about. This, um, which I never know the pronunciation. Is it broader or bruder? I've always called it bruder, but bruder. maybe it is broader. I think I've said broader. I've said, I've said both. Yeah. What a broader is, it just clamps to um, maybe a two by four, a joist. Hey, that's neat. Um, something uh, around that pipe. And then you can swivel it and aim it towards the pipe. Turn your lamp on, plug it in, and boom, there you go. So for ten forty nine and something in the four dollar range, you've been able to thaw out some pipes or prevent some freezing. And in the summertime, why go to the tanning bed? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't don't do that. Don't if do you want to glow like Ryan, <laughs> use that's what lamp. I do. I put a bunch of brooder lamps. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, quick question: How hard is this to put together, and how does how do you actually operate it? So literally, it's just like a light bulb. Any light bulb you would put in a socket. Uh, you're just screwing that light bulb in, and the broader uh, will clamp to anything that's about that wide or smaller, um, and then you just plug it in. So you need so to have an outlet. Anybody can do it, right? Yeah, anybody Absolutely. can do it. Okay. And usually there's a little button, on-off button on the yeah. side that you just. Is there a time limit that you leave that on, or is there? Uh, can you just does that make the shut off, or is it just something you have to unplug and plug back you up? Definitely will have to unplug. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, and that, as far as the, these temperatures, a lot of people have been leaving them on continuously. I've had three day. or four people tell me about this, uh, that they've had to have one of these, so I'm glad you're using yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. That's because of how cold it's been. Sure. We actually sold out last week okay. and people came yeah. in and we didn't, we didn't have any. You can use an outdoor flood lamp that puts mm -hmm. off enough heat. Okay. Um, if you put it right up to a pipe, this just puts out a significant amount yeah. more. And you, can, awesome. you don't have to be as close on something. It kind of does a yeah. good job for... A, you know space don't awesome. don't recommend heating a house with one no no that's not suggested that, that would be a lot of them and don't rely on that no. to your house. <laughs> but as far as uh throwing out pipes that's a very easy and expensive gosh video. that's so neat hey that's that is, neat that is neat all right we're going to get into our pen sponsorship for the day <laughs> and this pen is the pilot g207 fantastic pen and um they these people are just so uh, gracious to uh, send us this pen. Great people. Service Master of Spruce Pine. Thank you so much. Um, I would venture to say that Service Master is pretty busy these days. Absolutely. If you guys do have issues um, outside of what we do, which is flooding, uh, flooding fire, fire, smoke, uh, clean up from any flooding of freezing pipes, Service Master is the people you need to call. Service Master, thank you for the pen today. Yes, thanks. And we will get into some questions. We'll dive right in. Um, I do want to say a disclaimer uh, before we do. Everything we suggest and um, recommend are simply that. We want everyone to be educated on how things work, but not how to work on technical things. We always recommend hiring a licensed service professional where risk is involved. Burleson Plumbing and Heating and its employees are not responsible for injury, damages, or loss related to you, your property, or home. So stay safe where risk is involved, which is in most cases with your plumbing, heating, and electrical. Um, Rocky, so the format, just to let you know, we'll, we'll ask questions that were submitted to us. We'll kind of walk through those, talk through those. If you have any interjections, just let us know. Um, and then after that, if you have questions that kind of come up, um, you, you ask them then, and we'll hopefully get them answered for you. Um, our first question comes from Nancy. Nancy. Um, Nancy is an avid viewer of the morning show. Thanks, Nancy. I see that name pop up frequently. But Aunt Nancy has a tub knob, I think a tub spout is what we're looking at here on your shower. Um, for pulling up for shower is getting harder to pull. What causes that to happen and what uh, can I do to make it pull up easier? So uh, for those of you who don't know what she's talking about, in a tub shower, there's a shower head up top that your handle in the middle and usually down below is a tub spout. That tub spout um, can work a few different ways. It may just have water come out and you divert the water up to the shower in a different place. Or some of those tub spouts like Nancy's built into the tub spout has a little pull lever. That's what she's talking about. So Ryan, um, how does that work? How does it function? At the end of the day, tub spout super simple. Uh, the way that they're designed, the, the pull mechanism is attached to a, usually a plastic piece that kind of looks like this and it has an inset rubber washer 
that sits kind of inside of it. So what happens is, is when you lift that up, it opens the gate, so to speak, for water to come out of the tub spout. But when okay. it's in a closed position, that gasket is creating a seal um, against the back end of the tub spout. So as the water's pushing against it, it actually seals that, that washer. Okay. Gotcha. And so it does not allow water to flow. Sometimes, and over time, uh, especially if you have water that has high mineral content or uh, scale, well water is great for that. It can build up inside that mechanism and could possibly uh, kind of gather on it uh, you know, years of use, that's just a natural occurrence, um, which could make it hard to pull up and mm -hmm. down. Another thing is, if the washer ever loosens or gets out of kilter, it can then create an issue of trying to pull it up because you're almost pinching that rubber washer in there. That really is the only two things that I could see potentially being the problem. Or it's, it's, it has served its lifespan and it's just time for a new So what's one. the fix? How does Nancy fix this? There are a couple ways to, to go about this. Uh, there is the easy fix, and that is really relative to how it was originally installed. If it's older, most likely it was installed on galvanized pipe or copper. That creates more of a difficult situation if it was copper. Galvanized is not as bad. If it's galvanized pipe, typically they just thread onto the galvanized pipe. So it's a pretty easy change out. If it's copper and it's been soldered on uh, or, or sweat, a male adapter sweat onto it, sometimes the length of that was specific to the particular tub spout. That can create some headache in trying mm -hmm. to change it out to a new one. And then it's, there is also the copper method that just slips on and tightens with mm -hmm. a, an Allen screw. And that's a much easier fix. Uh, and we do sell every variety of tub spout to kind of accommodate each situation. Depth is a big thing, how far out the galvanized piece of pipe comes, how far out the copper piece of pipe comes. But at the end of the day, the change out is relatively easy if you just take your time and, and don't overthink it. Many yeah. times with plumbing, what happens is is it's so easy to overthink it and it's really much simpler yeah. than the uh, realize. thing I would like to interject is, is when you, uh, if you wanted to try to see what tub spout, if you're having issues with your tub spout, um, definitely, you know, shut your water off to that area. Um, you don't want to get in a bind there. I've seen that happen a yeah, lot of times. Um, but you can actually just take your hand and see if you can get any turn. If it starts to turn, you're probably on a threaded pipe. Um, but most people, when they come in, just tell us what they've got. Um, if you can bring a tub spout in, your old one, and like he said, if it's sweated on there, if it's copper, it might be harder to cut them off. You might not want to mess something up. But if you can get it started thread and you know it's a threaded one, go ahead and thread it off and bring it in. We get those measurements on what it, how far back inset it is for that pipe, and we'll know what to replace it with. So that's just something that yeah. before you come in and, and have to go back home and get something, that's just one thing to bring in. Yeah. Question. Yeah. I would be like Nancy in this situation. Okay. Right? I'd be a complete novice. So would it be a good idea for her to take a picture? Yes. If she couldn't get it Ab off? Absolutely. Um, our, or maybe all around it or something. Our, the the old adage, a picture's worth a thousand words. Yeah. At the counter and at plum plumbing, uh, in the plumbing world, if you can take a series of pictures and yeah. think about picture on um, us not knowing those dimensions in the picture, you know, put a tape measure up to something and then take the picture. Okay. If you don't have a tape measure, do a dollar bill, you know, then you can kind of okay. gauge how far that, how big it is in that picture. Sure. Um, but yes, if you've got, smartphones are a lifesaver. Yes, um, When Absolutely. you're coming to pick up parts or to fix something. Um, we've had people take a lot of pictures and that more the merrier. Um, and we can work with that for the most part. Right. And, and another thing to mention, if you absolutely don't feel comfortable doing that, you know, there are many situations where that just might not be something that you want to get into. Mm -hmm. That is a very simple fix for our technicians. And so they can come out, change that out, and the cost of it, it would be relatively yeah. inexpensive. In all honesty, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's a one-hour service charge. Yeah. They can do that in less than the hour. Usually that's something I would tell people. Do you have a water filter you need change while yeah. we're there, a light bulb, I mean anything yeah. that you're, you've got a service man there for an hour, 
Um, it's that quick. So awesome. Yeah. Um, Sheila's question. Okay. This is our second question um, submitted today that we're going to cover on faucets. Sheila asked, hey, guys, these sessions are perfect for city folk like us. My question is about my kitchen faucet. It's wobbly, but it's functional. A black rubber ring disintegrated around its base. Can I replace that ring or does the entire faucet need to be replaced? So faucet repair. Um, Great question. It's a very good question. We get probably, I would say, more faucet repair questions than about anything um, at the counter. Um, and repairing faucets for people on site, we, we do a little bit of as far as um, stems and things like that. Um, so with, with her situation, mm -hmm. what do you recommend? Okay, this is this is what I would say from from the very beginning. There are not as many faucet manufacturers as there once were. Uh, there, that has kind of narrowed down, but there's still a lot yeah. of people that make faucets. The thing about it is, each manufacturer makes their faucet, and it's their design, it's their engineering, it's their parts, and they don't they don't like to cross. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so you can't buy a mowing part and put it on a Kohler faucet. It just doesn't work like that. Yeah. So what I'm getting at is, uh, with Sheila's question, we need the first thing that we need to do is identify what brand of faucet yeah. that is. The great thing about a lot of these faucet companies is they offer repair parts to repair pretty much anything uh, related to that faucet other than if it gets a hole in the body of the brass, then you're, you're looking at a new faucet. But when it comes to O-rings, washers, nuts, springs, clips, things like that, handles, whatever, there's usually a detailed parts breakdown that, and you can get those parts, yep. you can find those parts. But the first key to the, the equation is knowing what yep. brand you're dealing with. So Sheila, to answer your question, Yes, you can repair this faucet, you can fix this faucet, and you don't have to replace that faucet. Now you can if you want, but you know, if it was me, I would pursue the, the fixing option yeah. first. Now Sheila just won a faucet yesterday, so maybe she wants to change it out for the new one. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that would be something that we could identify by finding the brand and then using a picture. Another thing about faucets is this this kitchen faucet is not going to have all the same parts as this kitchen yeah. faucet, even within the same mm -hmm. the same line. Yeah, Delta's, if you've got a Delta, uh, one series of their kitchen faucet has totally different repair yeah. parts than another series. So you can't just come in and say, "Oh, it's a Delta." Yeah, that t that tells me okay. that tells me about nothing in terms of what I'm trying to pursue or what direction I go in. And a lot of people just always assume it's a Delta and then you find yeah, out yeah, <laughs> it's not a Delta. Yeah. Um, so we, the information is key for us. Uh, starting with the brand is a must. And then pictures, again, pictures are great. It's amazing. I can, I can have somebody come in, show me a picture. I can Google certain things, intricacies about that faucet and usually I'd say 90% of the time, find their exact yeah. faucet, yeah. find a model number, and then I can yeah. chase down We've done that the parts breakdown. Yeah. And yeah. that actually happens unbelievably a lot. Yeah. Um, and I, our guys, our, our service guys will be out at a job and take a, a picture and send me an email with a picture and say, this is what I'm working with. I need, I need this particular wow. part for yeah. this. So then I, I go and have to track it down. And so, you know, if it steps outside of the parameters of what I'm normally used to or what we normally sell, then there's some research and investigation that goes into it. But, you know, the Internet is a powerful tool. Right. And if you know what to look for, you know, what keywords to search for, we can find your faucet yeah. and we can find the repair parts and we can get you uh, and even show you how to put it back together. Yeah. You know, and then Sheila's situation is a little bit different. You don't as often have people talking about uh, the wobbly side of things. That right. happens a lot with the kitchen faucet. Um, the main thing is my kitchen faucet is leaking out of the, the where the water comes yeah. out, the, the head. Um, that is the most common question, and that is definitely something that is fixable. Mm -hmm. I, almost always you can fix that leaky faucet. Um, th there again, we have to know that, that brand. Um, if you can take pictures, if you have already taken your handle off, all those handles come off, and underneath that handle, 
usually tells the story of what kind of brand it is. Yeah. Um, if you take a handle off and you're comfortable doing that, usually it's just an Allen wrench, some sort of set screw. Um, <clears throat> if you will take the handle off and usually re remove a nut, there'll be a um, stem, some washers, something that something. gives us an idea. If you bring that to us, we have a book. It is our stem book, as we call it. That thick. Around that thick. And it, the stems are in there by length. So if you bring that wow. stem, we can flip through to the right length and then line it up and say, okay, you've got a, a Delta. You've got a um, wow. Chicago faucet. So that gives us a lot to go off of. Um, as far as the way those faucets work and why they're leaking out of the head, depends really on brand mm -hmm. and how they made that faucet. Talk through like how that works on how to repair a leaky faucet. Uh, typically when you're, when you're experiencing a drip, the dreaded faucet drip, mm -hmm. um, that is coming from a control issue and the controller is the stem or the cartridge. It, it, that is designed and in place to one, mix the water, but it also releases the water. It, it, when you when you actuate the handle, it's the thing that says, okay, I'm open now, here comes the water. And it also, you're telling it, okay, I want more hot water, or I want more cold water. So yeah. it's the device that is allowing the water to move, but also regulating temperature in a cartridge situation. If you have a two-handle faucet, then your stems are just saying, open, close, kind of open, kind of okay. closed. Um, so the stem, without a shadow of a doubt, if you're getting a drip out of the faucet, the stem or the cartridge is the issue. Yeah. Um, and that's an easy fix. Uh, that it, the biggest thing is identifying what it is and making sure that, you know, we stock a lot of different stems, but we don't stock everything because yeah. there, are, there are thousands mm -hmm. of, of options out there. But again, it's something that if you can bring it in or take a picture of it, usually we can identify. I typically tell people, if it's not in our book, that's not a good sign. Right. Um, and that, that brings me to this. There are faucets as we all know we can buy things that are imported that i would consider to be like throwaway type products you use it it goes bad it's so inexpensive that you throw it away and get another one to replace good point. It. a uh, repair kit usually around 15 20 dollars okay. in that range 10 15 20 dollars depending on the brand um to repair a faucet and then we have some faucets on the on what he's talking about you can replace a lav faucet for forty dollars yeah um so you look at that and some people gauge it like oh i'll just buy one of those cheap faucets instead of fixing my old one um, yeah. some people are really connected to their old faucet they like its look they like they've sure. used it for years it's become their friend and they want it repaired so um, then yeah. we get into how can we repair this and what's and, it going to look and like? the, the problem that lies in let's say the more import low cost faucet is those faucets are designed to just throw away and so the parts for them are not as readily available so sometimes i run into that and you find this a lot from uh purchases made at like let's say a huge box store mm -hmm. and it's kind of an off brand that you've never heard of before that that's a huge indicator that okay i can put this faucet in and it's going to be cheap but down the road chances are i'm going to have a real difficult time finding anything for it right. if it's a Delta or a Kohler or a, even Price Fister or Moen or some of your main label kind of guys, without a shadow of a doubt, they're going to stand behind their product. But if it's something, you know, like Aqua Plumber brand or whatever, you know, some random brand that you've never heard of before, mm -hmm. chances are that it's for a purpose. Yeah. It's so you put it in and then two years from now when it fails, you take it out. And we, <laughs> we've been down that road you know, in our... Um, in our faucet sales, we, we tried out a brand. I won't even mention it, but yeah. that, that particular brand, I would say, uh, one out of every four we sold was coming back in the door oh, as wow. a return. So, um, so no that's good. why we don't, we don't go down that road too yeah. much. Um, we try to stick with something that the lowest end faucet we sell is peerless that, and we like peerless cause it's in the Delta family. It's affordable, but it's in the Delta family. So if you can repair it, there is yeah. options for repair. Um, Hopefully but that answered I just question. the big thing on that that question is I want you guys to have the confidence that that we can help you get it fixed. Um, um, if something gets over your head, um, hopefully we can talk you through it. Um, but just that being confident, saying okay, 
th those guys told me my faucet can be repaired. And as long as it's not one of these throwaway faucets, um, then we'll, we'll probably go a long way to getting it to quit leaking, quit wobbling, whatever the case may be. So just have more confidence that you can get that faucet fixed. And a lot of times it's just a loose handle. I've seen that a ton of yes. times. And people learn to live with a loose handle. Don't learn to live with it. It's yeah, fixable. fixable. It's definitely yeah. fixable. Um, any, any interjections? Any extra questions? Anything you can think yeah, of? Yeah, first of all, um, I really appreciate what you guys do because when we moved back up here, we've been gone 26 years. So we, we came to my wife's home place mm -hmm. and it was built in 1941 so everything had to be redone yeah and in the last bunch of years uh, kitchens have kind of been you know renovated to more stylish stuff yeah. like mm -hmm. they have the bigger faucets and stuff mm -hmm. like that has that been a good thing or a bad thing it seems from somebody that doesn't know yeah and i and i don't know <laughs> um, yeah. the you know it seems i mean it seems the bigger faucets, is that a pressure issue? Less, more, does it affect it at all? Uh, that's a good question. I think the big thing is people are realizing more and more um, there's two places in your home you, you use the most. Um, one's your bathroom, the other's your kitchen. Right. People are realizing, you know, they're with ordering online, getting out of the homeless, people are home more for the most part and they they want to be happy with what they have. So they are looking at bigger, better things mm -hmm. in their kitchen. Um, faucet is one of the main things they're looking is, at. Yeah. Um, the touchless systems, they're right. so nice. You, you got a handful. I, I was in the situation two nights ago making bread and chicken. And <laughs> I mean, if you've ever made bread and chicken, you you're around. in a mess. And you want to wash your hands. I basically yeah, knew right. I'm going to be washing the faucet after I <laughs> wash my hands. Um, but I don't have a touchless. That's, that's why. It's very nice in those situations. But... You know the the dollar signs will go up right. as the uh, you don't lose a lot of, of pressure if you had pressure issues before it's definitely probably still going to be happening um, but functionality they're probably more functional I mean wouldn't you agree with that I, I would agree with that absolutely the 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 highlight and I think why a lot of people are drawn to it one is the ex, the aesthetic nature yeah, of that absolutely. faucet it's like yeah. the centerpiece you it know is. you walk in the kitchen you're like whoa look yeah, at that faucet true. you know yeah <laughs> um, but the the theory and the design behind it one you know if you have a conventional sink two bowl sink and they're relatively shallow bowls when you're washing big pots and pans it it can be very difficult with a ro low profile spout mm -hmm. to get things you know true. it and so that provides an awesome way to update your kitchen and even make your sink more functional to have this thing that comes way up and you can get pots under there Another thing is, you know, people love the fact that the sprayer is built into the head. Yeah. And and it gives you multiple spray patterns as well. You have an aerated flow typically, and then you have an actual spray head. Um, so there is there is a lot of pros to this high arcing spout. It, it condenses everything down. You don't have this huge, you know, two handles and then a side sprayer. It just kind of makes right. everything clean and, and nice. So I do get the, the pro side of it for sure. As with anything, usually the fancier you go or the more technologically you go, the more opportunity there is for a breakdown. You know, So now you're adding a, a particular spray head that's not just real generic. You, know, you can easily go to a, a place like us and just get one of those generic black spray heads. This is going to be specific to yeah, your okay, faucet if something goes wrong with it. There's now a, a whole hose assembly. There's a weight that's involved in that hose assembly. There's a way that it attaches to the body of the faucet, and that's going to be unique as well. So that there are, you know, it adds it adds complication to the overall system. Like we said before, everything's yes got replacement parts yep. in those. So you're not left high and dry, um, but there are more working parts. When I when our sink here, I have a, a well 1941 house, so it says an old antique sink two big deep bowls in it mm -hmm. and i got a, a faucet here much like uh, the one that you gave last night yeah and the the sprayer is getting a little bit it's not all coming out i mean it's okay. not you know it's missing mm -hmm. one or two mm -hmm. little little lines sure and i've tried to look at it to get it apart is there a way of doing that um one of the most common things about water pressure people will go well my shower has great pressure my tub has great pressure but my kitchen faucet and my bathroom faucet the pressure keeps getting worse. Okay. Um, that's called an aerator. An aerator is on the end of the faucet. Um, on every 
kitchen and laugh while that there's an aerator. If if you've ever seen a garden hose just wide open, that's what your faucet would look like if you didn't have an aerator. The aerator patterns the water in such a way that it's clean. You won't get your hands under it. It's not spraying everywhere and getting all okay. that everything. All right. Those aerators, as good as they are for that, catch their filter. They catch all sorts of sediment as it comes through your line. Um, so removing your aerator periodically, um, and I say periodically because some people might be needing to wash theirs out monthly if they've got a big sediment issue and then you might want to think about a whole house filter or maybe yearly but at least yearly i would go through your house and re remove the aerators turn them upside down wash them make sure you don't lose any parts out of them and then put them back that that will help that water pressure the big thing is uh, all aerators are uh, used to be visible you could just screw them off almost with your hand if not you could get a little wrench and and uh loosen them up um now with the faucets we're talking about they, they don't want that aerator poking out. They want it to look clean and crisp, the aesthetic nature of it. Um, so they kind of hide it. But we have a special tool downstairs okay. for Delta. And I know... And there are different, like, there are different aerator keys depending on the faucet. It, yeah. But it's called an aerator key. And there again, okay. if you get us a brand, we will find that aerator key. If it's a Delta, we, we keep a few of those in stock. Otherwise, we can, we can get it. We'll, we'll order we want. Um, very inexpensive, 5 $6, I think, is the average... Um, that just goes up in there. It has little notches and grooves. And if you if you look on the underside of your faucet, you'll see those grooves. Okay. It goes in there and it'll screw right out. And it looks just like an aerator from that point. Well, you said something that, from my standpoint, being a novice in this area, you said something that made me think. Uh, we have city water. Mm -hmm. So according to what I think you said, is there's going to be some impurities coming in there. Because yeah. as a person sitting here, I think the city water's got to be clean as it yeah. comes to that there's stuff in it, That's minerals a, or whatever. I'm, I'm also on city water. And Me too. I believe you are too, yeah. Um, the the conception is that city water, yeah. you, it's not a well, so you don't have sediment pumping up and out into your system. Um, but anytime that the, the city may work on a line, um, you hear about uh, bull, boil alerts, boil alerts, Things boiling like your that. water. Actually, we were just uh, having one the other day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So boil alerts, stuff like that. Uh, that means they've been working on a line or something has happened that they recommend that you boil your water for a certain amount of time as it comes in. Um, so that, that should be a red flag. Like it's not always perfect. Um, otherwise, a lot of city lines might be old metal pipe, galvanized pipe. Okay. Um, a lot of your lines, you know, after the yeah. city, maybe galvanized old metal pipe copper pipe and that will deteriorate it'll break down metal pipe will that's why a lot of people are using pecs now um, it uh, will not pex cpvc plastic pipes um, don't have metal that is is deteriorating rusting and breaking down and that that a lot of times is what will get caught in the aerators um, so anything like that can get up into your mm -hmm system and that's why i recommend even if you've got city water look at getting a whole house filter you, you okay know, we we install whole house filters for like a hundred bucks what, what does that do i mean what are you, what are um the whole house filter is super simple you've got an in incoming line out outgoing and it's just a head that head um there's two different styles the one one of the heads just goes down into a sump filter it's a clear container that you yourself would unscrew and put a cartridge in. That cartridge is just a filter. That's what filters the water. Um, we've got some that will filter, most just filter sediment. And then we've got some that will do taste and odor. So if you have that chlorine taste in your city water, right. it'll filter that out. Typical in city water. Yeah. Where does um, it go? Uh, you need to put it when your water comes into the house. Um, if you've got any sort of pressure tank in your house, you would want to put it after the tank. Right. Yeah. This is a professional job, though, right? Uh, it, it, yeah. So we, we, we for the most part, be, yeah. for the most part, there's a lot of homeowners that have come and do it themselves. If they've done any any level of plumbing, it's one of the more basic things. But if you're uncomfortable with plumbing, I would definitely recommend getting someone to install that. And again, it. it's an easy like they can get in and out. Like it does yeah. not take forever. How do you keep the sprayer from hanging out of the faucet? That <laughs> one of the biggest things I've I've noticed, and this may sound simpler than probably what you're looking for but one thing you want to be really good one thing you want to be really careful of as it pertains to the pull down style faucet head that relies on that weight to pull it back in there's there's this is twofold one of the easy fixes is to make sure 
that underneath your kitchen sink. You know, a lot of times we've got cleaning supplies yeah, and probably. buckets and all that yeah. kind of, and it's very easy for that weight to get hung on something. And so if it if that weight hits, let's say higher than it should, then it takes all the tension off of that head to be able to get it to go back where it needs to be. They most most of the manufacturers have designed those heads to once they get, you know, that far away from the the spout, there's a magnet that wants to pull back. Oh yeah. So you the the thing about the weight is it's just there to get it to that point to where it wants to snap back snap in. back into wow, place. Okay. So I, the first thing I would check and make sure is that the weight's not getting caught on any of the plumbing, yeah. any cleaning products, anything underneath the cabinet that there, you know, what would be a good idea is open up the cabinet, actuate the head, and see where the weight naturally falls, okay. and make sure that that, that area... Leave, leave a clear path. Yeah, so it, it can go up and down. Because I've experienced that, where you start pulling on it even, and it's like, what in the world is going on with this thing? Yeah. You look under there, and it's got a bottle of Windex, you know? <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, That's Hang the other thing, you know? is it might not be able to go as far down, but... I've seen people hanging their cleaners on the hose by accident. They'll put it back in there and the, the spray yeah. handle will just catch. How do you judge how far to put that weight on if you're putting the sink in? Or the what, what I think would be a good rule of thumb is if the, the uh, head is completely affixed into the spout and you look in there, it, they'll ha there'll be a natural curve or right. dip in that hose. It's to find that natural dip in, in right in that vicinity. Oh, okay. Because that's, that's going to be your lowest point yep. theoretically so that's where it's going to want to come back to especially once it has the weight okay on. perfect yeah. yeah um good well um you what you said two I, was, I was oh yeah uh, the magnetic thing but another idea okay. um i know specifically for our house we have a pull down uh sprayer and so there is the aerated part but then there's that outer part that provides the spray pattern mm -hmm. you know and there's a bunch of those little like dipples that a lot of times those just get scale build up from minerals in mm -hmm. the water and I can actually turn mine up I need to clean mine and and see where there's just been you know for the last year just mm -hmm. a build up of scale and they'll a lot of times it'll clog those little ports one thing you can do if it's a delta specifically they have a design that is made to just be able to clean with your thumb so you got those little dimples sticking out if you just take your thumb and rub around them like that it breaks up anything that might be in inside of those and uh, it will help to, to release it. Another great thing is to take your head off and drop it in a thing of CLR. And, and I think the one I've got is going to have to have the tool that you're talking about okay. because I've tried to take it loose. Mm -hmm. And it has a button on it that gives a constant flow and then a spray yeah. flow. You switch the button. If you, if, if you pull it out, the way that the head fixes to the hose, it's just a threaded connection there to be able to, to break it loose from, okay. from the hose. And then you could easily you know put it in a some CLR and let it sit for a little bit, which CLR is great for breaking up scale and minerals and okay. things like that. But it, it, again, with the aerator, if you can even just bring the head in, we can identify. I'm going to feel real old here. Uh, when were you born? What year? 87. Okay. And you were? 82. Okay. So we moved to Morgantown <laughs> in 87. And a 70s type house, Parsonage, Church Parsonage. So one day I was going to surprise Miss Janice with a new faucet in the kitchen. So I got the faucet, everything good. So I don't know anything about what I'm doing at all, period, <laughs> zero, okay? I do see that there's two cutoff valves under the sink, and I cut them off. So one of them is rusted, it's the old house, got copper pipes. So I start trying to work on this, and it breaks Ooh. below Ooh. the cutoff valve, Ooh. where the copper's coming, Ooh. on the hot water side. Ooh. <laughs> so I flood the kitchen, I flood the kitchen literally flood the kitchen. I don't know what to do. Mm. I don't have any idea. So how important is it for people to know where the shut off valve outside Absolutely. is and how to do it? Because <laughs> I didn't I didn't even know we I didn't know there's such a thing. So um, every every house should have a cutoff. I'll say should. Um, if you're in a city water situation you always have a main cutoff outside okay. of the street. A lot of people don't know where that's at. That's on yeah. Yeah. I, my your homework, everyone watching who watches this, is to go find your main shut off. Um, a lot of times where your water comes in the house, crawl space, basement, um, maybe just coming in somewhere in a utility room, something of that nature, um, there should be a cutoff. Go and try cutting it off. See, see if you can cut your water off. Um, if it's not there and it's a city situation, there'll be a box outside with a round lid, something like this. 
you take that lid off, there might be some insulation in there. We learned during this freezing, a lot a of dead people cat. Don't have, you know, you know, uh, <laughs> usually spiders. So yeah, that. But a under, snake. At the bottom of that is a meter where the town uh, tracks how much water you're using, and that will have a shut off. And it. It's like a tool that you... Yeah, you, you basically have to have, because it is so far down, you can get down in there with an adjustable wrench and do it. Uh, we have a meter key uh, or... Um, yeah, so it's about three feet long, and it has two handles, and it just has two grooves that fit over that, that shut off. And this is important, because I'm telling you, I flooded the house, yeah, not knowing that that was there. Absolutely. I know if, it's there now. In a well, uh, usually you're going to have something at the well head, maybe, that you can cut it off. If not... Right when it comes in the house on a well situation, usually somebody's put a cut off. If it was one of our plumbers and they plumbed the house or someone who uh, is a little bit more meticulous with their plumbing, um, our guys will put a shut off going to every section of the house. Okay. So if you're just working on this kitchen or this bathroom, you can shut it off. The rest of the house is fine and then you can work. Okay. Um, but if you're doing something like you're doing and it looks like old pipes or you just want to be safe, definitely find that shut off cut your water off your whenever head. you're working on a faucet whatever it is it, the easiest thing it's always wise to shut off the water to the faucet because you never know if you're gonna you know accidentally Sorry. bump something or you know you're in the middle of fixing something you accidentally hit one of the handles and turn the faucet on and it's not what needs to happen in that that moment in time so it is always a good rule of thumb uh, and you know to make sure that your shutoff valves under the sink that's what they're there for but like in your case if they're older than yeah. who knows what then sometimes it is a good idea to go and find that main shutoff right. and just hit it for a little bit. It won't hurt anything, you know, to shut it off. Um, and I will do one last little plug because uh, I know we're running out of time here. But um, if you want to, uh, if you know you have a Delta, specifically this is a Delta repair kit. Comes with, we sell a lot of these, is why I wanted to show you guys this. Um, it has basically all the parts you need for a, for a lot of different Delta faucets. So very good repair kit around the $13, $14 range. And then um, as far as other repair, we've got assorted washer packs. We've got um, a lot of different repair kits. Um, I think that's in like 4 to $5 range. So you can fix a faucet for under $20 if it's got a leak. Um, we have a lot of stuff. If you can get us headed in the right direction on brands, pictures, yada, yada. Yeah. Um, so I will say uh, we'll wrap up. But I do want everybody to uh, go ask questions. Uh, as Sheila can tell you, you can win something. Um, uh, next month is the Wi-Fi thermostat. Yay. We will be giving that out. And if you do want to ask a question, go to BurlesonPlumbing.com slash QA. Also, all of our history of videos is right there. You can go on Facebook, which you're on now. Um, but if you wanted to see a history a little bit more uh, organized, Mm -hmm. on burlsonplumbing.com slash QA. The very top of that page is the videos for our YouTube channel. Um, and on that, on the YouTube channel, I broke it down by section in the description. So you can actually go and say, hey, I want to just listen to the part where they talked about aerators. Mm -hmm. um, so you can just click a time that goes directly to that. And I put some some words on some of them, the, the question mm -hmm. if you can't hear us talking or whatever. So it's got kind of a caption type system. That's cool. Hey, that's yeah. neat. Yeah. Hey, that's neat. <laughs> um, Doc Rock, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, thank You're you very, very much. Welcome. I appreciate it. It's All good right. having you today. It's good yeah. having somebody, you know, we we know some of this stuff, so we don't think outside the box. So it's yeah, not knowing. Time. I have one question. Can you get more pressure in your house? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, some, some different situations, uh, it just depends. Um, sometimes you can adjust the pressure switch, very simple, um, and that will bump your pressure up. Um, in other situations in city water, what I have in my basement, a lot of people complain about that with city water, especially right. if they're at the end of the line and they get the scraps yeah. of the water, so to speak. <laughs> um, they, with mine, when the water comes in the basement, it immediately goes into a jet pump and a pressure tank. Okay. That jet pump pushes the water into the pressure tank. The pressure tank holds that pressure into my house. Um, you're talking an increase. I think I had 20 PSI before I put that in. Now it's up at 60, and you talk about a lot better shower at 60. Yeah. It's an interesting fact. A lot of faucet companies base their gallon per minute flow on 80 PSI. Okay. Which is, when you think about that, that's a that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Uh, most, most people, most homes in this area function on 30 to 50, somewhere in there. 
Um, but a lot of the foster manufacturers base their their numbers on eighty psi. Now, as a novice, psi. Was psi. I was just about to say yeah. psi for a lot of people who don't know, which a lot of people don't, um, is the pressure rating of your water. Okay. Um, the Essentially, pounds per square inch. Pounds per square inch, okay. which makes less sense to me than somebody saying psi. But it's the rating of your pressure in your home. Um, if you have low pressure, it's probably somewhere in the 10 to 20 range if you feel like you don't have adequate pressure. Um, so a lot of people are comfortable in 30 to 50. That's a very common pressure range. And nowadays, people, because they've got 18 shallow yeah, really, bodies, yeah. you yeah. walk in, it's like, ks, 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 yeah. you know? <laughs> we just installed yeah. for guys, seriously, eight spray heads on his walls with three shower heads overhead. Um, we did a job, supplied the faucets wow, for that. Cool. So, yeah, so people will want more water, and with that, it's a professional job to install this. You're talking about. I, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, the way it's laid out and designed. Yeah, for sure. Okay, thank you for having absolutely. Me. Um, appreciate you coming on, Thanks. and uh, hope everyone has a wonderful Friday. Yes, happy Friday. Happy Friday and good weekend. Uh, I hope everybody has a good weekend. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.